Everything the Eighties is a show uh, that focuses on pop culture things from the 1980s. And I try to present these things in a way that includes both documentary and humor and try to meld those things to present a compelling episode. Now, the first incarnation of this show was actually called The Breakfast Ramp. And the first episode I did was uh, Lucky Charms, how the Lucky Charms aren't the same Lucky Charms that we grew up with. They changed out the shapes and all this other stuff. But the problem with The Breakfast Ramp is I kind of pigeonholed myself into being able to only review uh, breakfast cereals. I wanted to expand that scope and just be able to review a whole multitude of things from the 1980s. What the? Snarf, snarf! Snarf, snarf! So I ended up reworking the idea and I ultimately came up with I Rate the 80s. And the name came from using the uh, double entendre uh, word that I use, I Rate, in the I Rate Gamer Show. In one sense, I'm irate, but I'm also rating. And at first, I thought it would be kind of like the uh, I Love the 80s show that used to air on VH1, but this incarnation would have humor, it would have documentary, and showcase where these things came from and, and poking fun at a lot of things that happened in the same time frame. What the hell? Ah, oh, crap. I had let a year pass before I did episode four, and I'm glad I did because I was able to get an HD camera, and I was like, okay, a year has passed since I've done I Rate the 80s. Let me go back and revisit it and try to make it more fleshed out. And one of the things I wanted to do was rate the product that I was talking about at the end, because after all, it is called I Rate the 80s. All right, guys, so how do I rate these? And also during this reformatting of the show, I would have myself interacting with some of the things I was reviewing, like the Micro Machines, Mad Balls. <laughs> the first season of I Rate the 80s did have its set of growing pains, but uh, by the end of season one, I think the show really came into its own, and uh, I really found the flavor of what the show needed to be. Oh no, you don't. And I remember with Family Guy, I remember when they were talking about it, they loved throwing those references in where only maybe 20% you know, of the people would actually get the joke. And that's kind of what I'm gearing myself for. I mean, how many people would pick up on the Freakies from the Freaky Cereal? <laughs> or the inclusion of the bad guy from the Pac-Man cartoon? Ah, so hard to find good help these days. 